Let's move on to our, our innovation crowdsourcing session. Six corporates and Mittelstand from Germany are with us today to share industry-specific perspectives on open innovation and what they are looking for in startup collaborators. After each corporate sharing, there will be a short Q&A segment. Please post your questions by scanning the QR code on your screen. So let's welcome our first speaker, Mr. Lars Rösler, co-founder and venture partner of BSH Startup Kitchen. Lars, please. Hi there, my name is Lars and I'm venture partner at BSH Startup Kitchen. I'm very happy to give an introduction to what we do and also to discuss opportunities that we can uh, enter together mutually. So to give you some background on what we do, we are the venture client unit of BSH Home Appliances Group. So BSH Home Appliances Group is one of the largest manufacturer in the home appliances space. As you can see with a broad portfolio of all home appliances you can wish off to have in your household. Um, we're one of the few multi-category players globally and as mentioned, one of the leading players in the field. What we look for and what we strive to do is to drive innovation um, to define the next generation of products in our households. And therefore, we look for very detailed and concrete innovations in the space. So our role at BSH Startup Kitchen is that to enable these innovations and to enable very concrete needs, our job is to identify and help to validate leading startup solutions that can help us solve these upcoming needs and innovations uh, for our customers and for us as a company. So we always start with a very concrete need and a project challenge at BSH that we want to develop. And then we reach out and find the right startup, which we will then help to onboard as a new potential partner, a long-term supplier for us as a company, which in the end will create a very mutually beneficial business relationship. We've done this uh, quite successfully in the past already. So within over the past um, 24 months, we onboarded uh, 25 solutions. So as you can see, more than one um, startup and one solution per month with a very high adoption rate of more than 40%. And we're not only looking for innovations on the product side, which is certainly one space we're looking into, but we look into innovations that can um, improve the way we also work as a company and create more value to our customers. What does it mean? So besides product innovations, we also look into process innovations, like how can we make our manufacturing, our supply chain more efficient? Or on the other side, how can we improve the effectiveness of our business processes, our service processes that can help make us become a more efficient company which could be customer facing or only internally facing. If this fits to what you're doing, if you are working on a solution which can help us to make better products, be more efficient as a company in whatever dimension, please reach out to us. We are your key contacts to find the right client within BSH and then successfully scale in the home appliance industry. Thank you so much and happy to take your questions in the Q&A session. Thank you very much, Lars. Good to have you with us. Uh, let's go straight into questions. And the first one is, uh, what in your perspective and your experience is meant by startup onboarding? And a very practical question as well, who pays for the pilot project? Mm -hmm. Very good one. Hi. So hi there again. Um, so what do we mean by startup onboarding? is um, that typically it can be pretty tricky and um, um, also complicated uh, for a startup to become a new client um, in the corporate. So what we help to do is like to help on both ends of, uh, of that process. One of them is of course, we take care of the process. So we navigate startups through that super heavy, maybe sometimes complicated process that you have to do one time in your life. And then when you're set up as a supplier, you're ready to go. We try to make that as smooth and as simple as possible. And of course, like you also need to be in touch with the right um, client internally. So uh, at least in my 
experience, startups typically struggle very hard for, with finding the right partner. Like they try and reach out to big companies that could be their clients, but it's hard to find the right person to talk to. And that's also something we take care of. We make sure that you as a startup, you talk to the right person, the decision makers who will be your long-term partners in the end. Uh, so we're the mediators here in the onboarding process. You were also asking about who's paying for the pilot. Uh, we, we do not pay for the pilot, like me personally, but the actual venture client will be paying the startup um, a fair price. Like, of course, that's something we have to discuss and negotiate, but our um, philosophy is that we pay a fair price for um, the performance or products that will be um, presented in the pilot project and it will be paid by this venture client. And I think this is a very, uh, in a way, smart idea because like in the end, if you're the potential future client already pays for that pilot project, you have a good validation that this is something uh, he or she really wants to have. And in the end, it's his or her money they put it into the POC. So once they have done that, they also have like the intrinsic motivation to keep it moving forward. If I would be paying it, it would just be gambling some funny money. And I think that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for real business here. Thank you, Lars, for that clarification. Uh, second question for you. What are some examples of product innovations that BSH is looking at, given the very wide range of products that you are developing? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. There might, there might be two things I want to point out. One of them is everything which can go into like new user interfaces. As you can imagine, like home appliances, something you have in your household, you, uh, you look at them, you interact with them, you touch them. And this is something we're looking very intensively into. So what will be the next um, type of interface, how you interact uh, with your Home appliance, they're like, they're, 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 they're your friends in your household and you either interact with them by voice, which sometimes makes sense. You interact with them using your smartphone, using as, that one as a remote control, or it could be also like very, very simply, like simply uh, when it comes to like new haptic or touch features um, on the display. Right, and um, uh, depending on what your kitchen looks like, you, you might have seen that there have been great advancements in the past, but this is something we definitely look into and really helps to create new products. The other um, topic I might want to point out is we're looking into the wide range of sensors in, and I, don't want, I want to leave it as un unspecific as it is because in the end, our products need to be smarter to take away the, the work or like take away decisions from the users. And then it's really about like breathing the devices, the, um, the senses to find out what's happening inside them, outside of them. Uh, there are so many things we're looking into and this is one of the other hot topics or like fields we're looking into. Thank you, Lars. Appreciate your, your time and your, uh, your clarifications, your insights. Shall we move on? Uh, our next speaker is Mr. Fritz Meyer. He's Managing Director of Airbus Singapore. Uh, once again, to the audience, please scan the QR code on your screen to submit your questions for Fritz. Over to you, Fritz. Hello and good afternoon. Thanks for listening to my presentation today on GSBF Connect Switch. Um, let me briefly introduce you to the Airbus company. We are a very old company, started in 1851, and uh, the family owned for five generations. Mr. Ebe runs the company as a chairman, and um, what we do is R&D manufacturing and marketing of surgical systems. We've got around just above 1,000 employees, 770 of them in Germany, and last year we made about 278 million euro in revenue proud of our German roots. You can see the pretzel over there. So we're Schwäbisch um, and uh, close to the customer in 110 countries. More than 15 subsidiaries, every Singapore is one of them. We're active in more than 110 countries. So the idea for our products is you have the ideal technique and we've got the technology to match. Basically we provide physicians with uh, energy products that they can use during interventions and uh, the technologies that we work with are electrosurgery, cryosurgery, 
hydrosurgery, thermal fusion, and plasma surgery. So as you can see, from hot to cold to water uh, and to gas, uh, we're using plenty of different energy sources. And when we put them together in one instrument, we call it hybrid technology. So again, one of our credo, we share our know-how and then the doctors can realize their full potential. We want to be a solution provider, not just a product company. What's particular for Switch today is that uh, Irby is considering to launch a so-called digital think tank here in Singapore. And what we really want to do is transform our business from a traditional sales and maintenance business to a business as a service um, and enable our devices via IoT or others. Um, we'd like to deal uh, product lifecycle management and upgrades via connected devices. Um, and in a further step, we're also looking into using intra-procedural generated data to improve surgical outcome, and then also feed that data to other imaging, navigation, or robotic devices. And we also want to develop new surgical energy devices with local doctors over here. So let's go a little bit into the detail of these three pillars of our digitalization approach. First one is from CAPEX to OPEX. Second is from preventive maintenance to predictive maintenance. And the third is what we call the real-time intra-procedure analytics. So let's start with from CAPEX to OPEX, which is really um, looking into new business models. Um, so whenever our machines are being used, uh, there's data collected, um, particularly during the activation of the surgical energy. And uh, we can use this data to get an idea about the activation time, the amount of energy used. And this information could be used to charge the customer for the amount of activation or for the amount of energy used. Um, and this could move our business model from CAPEX to OPEX, from investment to as a service. Now, the question that we have is um, what technology is needed to make this happen? Um, we, of course, have the energy generator. We have the data collection going on, but how do we interface this? And on the other hand, we also would need to know um, what kind of communication devices we need, et cetera, et cetera. So if anybody has a good idea for this, please don't hesitate. Um, next point is from preventive maintenance to predictive maintenance. So really today, um, our service engineers will go periodically to the hospitals and um, look at the machines to check whether they are still working. What we want to have in the future is really um, to tell the customer which part needs to be changed or what needs to be done so that the unit does not break down. So really from preventive to predictive. And we feel that electrical data collected from sensors from our electrical components can help us with that. And the third point, and that's really, I think um, the most uh, adventurous point here is um, when we apply our electrosurgical generators, just for an example, they constantly measure the tissue resistance of the tissue that is under the energy application. And uh, the information on this tissue resistance um, could be used to give additional information to the user, for example, about the status of the tissue, um, about the margin of the tissue, and uh, plenty of others. So if this information could be used to give the surgeon information about the surgery, I think it would be very helpful. Uh, there's also other possibilities, like, for example, comparing one surgery to the next, comparing average energy used during a surgery uh, and plenty of others. So these um, real-time intra-procedure analytics, I think will require a lot of data analysis. And then we need basically clinicians to come back with ideas how to make use of that data. And uh, if anybody has good ideas, good technology in this area, please let us know as well. Um, potential partners are, of course, hospitals, and uh, they are MedTech Digital Innovation Initiatives, also research initiatives, and then, and that's why we're here today, startup companies and also mature business, which have joined non-competitive interests. We're also looking at universities and teaching institutions, as well as education initiatives that deal with digital and healthcare, and of course, also consult companies and incubator companies. Everyone's welcome, so please don't hesitate. And we're really looking forward to your ideas and your technologies. My name is Fritz Meyer, and I would like to thank you for listening the last five plus minutes or so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fritz. Hi, thanks for hey. joining us. Uh, Hello, a couple everyone. of questions uh, from the audience. The first one, 
um, would Urba be looking mainly at proven technologies? Um, no, I think we're open um, to anything really. Um, I think for Irby, we are good in hardware, so we really need people who are good in software and data to collaborate, and that could be anything that's out there, really. Thank you. And the, the second question here is, how do you see the collaboration model or process with the Singapore startup? So I think, um, again, we're open, but I think the most straightforward one is that a company offers us good services and we pay them for those services. I think that would be the most straightforward one, but we also open to look into other things, you know, even joint IP or whatever it is and evaluate that. Thank you. Um, I think we have time for one more question, um, Fritz. Can you share a little bit more with us about some of the concrete projects that you have embarked on? So currently we uh, installed uh, intense, extensive data loggers in our electrosurgical units. And we are basically logging all data that is collected during a day of surgeries. And we're looking at what does this data tell us um, with regards to the surgery? What does it tell us about um, what the surgeon does? What happens to the patient? What is the condition? How's the functioning of our device, um, et cetera, and et cetera. And I think in now in the next step, we need to correlate this data, make sense out of it, and see how could this be used for our clients, which are the surgeons. Thank you, Fritz. Appreciate all your answers. Thanks again for joining us. Uh, let's move on to the next corporate. Our third speaker is Mr. Bengt uh, Steinbreiher, uh, who is founder of LH Startup Maker. Bengt, please. Hi, my name is Bengt Steinbreiher. I'm the founder of the LH Startup Maker, the startup collaboration platform of Lafarge Holzim. I'm excited to join you here today at the German Singapore Business Forum. In the next 25 years, 2 billion people will move into urban areas and 60% of the infrastructure required has not been built yet. This means we have to build a city the size of New York every month. Now in December, in January, in February and so on and this for the next 25 years. We need to build smarter, faster, more efficient and more sustainable. Therefore, we need new products, new approaches for production and logistics, and new ways of how we build and use infrastructure and properties. Lafarge Holzim is well positioned to lead the innovation of the construction industry. With our 2,300 sites globally and 600 million tons material produced, shipped and sold every year, we are able to contribute and shape how the industry will look like in the future. Also, our proximity to the specific market needs gives us a great opportunity to partner with local innovators and startups, and this in about 80 countries across the world. And we have the opportunity to innovate along our entire value chain. So from production to logistics, up to commercial and the work on the construction side. So we are looking into solutions around industry 4.0, like predictive maintenance or cement quality prediction, but also ways which allow us making better supply chain decisions by increasing transparency on our fleet and material flows. Here we use solutions like hauling platforms or virtual twins. On the commercial side, we are supporting our customers with innovative solutions on the construction side but also the retail business, which is selling our products in bags. In fact, because of our strong presence in emerging markets, we are partnering with many startups which help our local retail business. For example, we are driving innovative solutions in the area of microcredits, mobile payment, or micro delivery services. Another important burning platform is sustainability, where we seek innovative solutions. Here we look into opportunities of alternative energy sources, recycling of materials to drive circular economy and the wide range of innovative solutions around carbon capture, use and storage. With our open innovation approach, we aim to become an early reference customer for a startup. This is why we are looking for startups which already have a technology in place which can be tested in real life conditions. 
the Lafarge Holzim startup maker brings together the business unit with a startup with the objective to buy and test the solution on a clearly specified business problem. And this always on the real market conditions. If the proof of concept is successful, we are supporting the startup to drive the rollout and adoption of the solution across the business. Do you think your solution could help to transform the construction industry? And do you want to have an impact on millions of people's life? Then get in touch with us and be a maker. Thank you. Hi, Bengt. Thanks for that. Hi, Valerie. Thanks. Hi. Thanks for joining us. Um, a few questions for you from the audience. Um, first of all, can you share a little bit more with us about how you work with startups in emerging markets? And if you can, uh, to share with us which startups you are currently working with as well. Yeah, I mean, maybe to start with, for us, it's very important that uh, when we test a startup solution, we, we always do that in, in the local market environment. So, so if there is a challenge in the Philippines or in Brazil or in Kenya, we, we do that always locally with the teams there. And what we find out also that quite often the local knowledge of a startup is also very important. So sometimes they, they bring a network which is already needed to test the solution. So what we observe is that many startups that we work with are then actually coming from the Philippines, from India, that they're from Singapore, with, with, who know the, the region and so on. Um, and and this, this gives us a lot of advantage to, to work together with them. And then we always, we, we run a proof of concept where, where we test the solution on a, on a small scale with the local team. This is already a very first important point for the startup to get connected to the, to the business people in Love Wash Holzim to learn also what are our challenges really, how does the cement operation uh, or construction material business is run. And it helps us then also to plan the next steps. Thanks very much for that. Uh, next question. Are there differing innovation fields of interest across different markets where Lafarge Holcim is active? Um, yes, I mean, because we, we are much stronger in, in the retail business in emerging markets where a lot of our product is sold through uh, small retail stores like kind of do-it-yourself stores, there we have a very strong retail presence and uh, things like, like last mile delivery or microfinances in an e-commerce setup uh, can be interesting. Uh, while in more mature markets and maybe urban environments, it is more kind of the, the concrete business where you are thinking, how can you support uh, tens of thousands of construction sites that we are serving every day? And there it's more the question, okay, I mean, how do we make sure that the, that the concrete is delivered in time, that uh, the, the quality assurance is given? How can we serve all the construction sites there better? Thank you. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. Uh, you had mentioned in your, in your sharing that Lafarge Holson is looking for more mature solutions and startups. Um, for younger startups, you know, those who are Series A or still at the seed stage, that are keen to engage with your company, what are some of the available modes of collaboration? I think, I mean, we, we look, in principle, we look at also at the wider range, range of startups, also if they're earlier stage. It is just if there is a, maybe a, not yet a solution that can be tested and it's maybe not in our core field of activities like uh, today we talked about, uh, hydrogen uh, trucks, for example, this would not be a field where we can invest now the next five to 10 years to come up with a marketable solution. However, if you're more into material science and you say, look, we are looking into new innovative materials, then we have our R&D center in Lyon, which is definitely also looking into those solutions and where there is also an accelerator program for such early stage startups. Thank you, Bengt. I think we could squeeze in one more question if you don't mind. Uh, this is from Julia. What are the main challenges you face when working with startups globally? I think we, we have managed through the LH Startup Maker to, to bring down the barriers to, to make it easier to work with startups and to connect to the local business. This, I think, was, was the main achievement so far in the last two years. Uh, 
still remaining challenge is then always the, the local mindset of the, of the teams, of the people. I mean, in a large organization with, with a long history, long engineering history, kind of the not invented here syndrome is still very strong. And I mean, there it, it helps a lot if, if we can connect the startup to a local business unit, can test the solution there, demonstrate how such innovative ideas can help. Um, but I think mindset change, uh, kind of fighting this not invented here syndrome, this is kind of the, the key challenge that we're facing. Thank you very much, Bengt. I really appreciate your insights. Uh, let's now proceed me. to the fourth speaker, who is Dr. Stefan Nottelfer. Director of Partnerships at uh, Lufthansa Innovation Hub. Uh, once again, to our audience members, please scan the QR code on your screen to submit your questions. Over to you, Stefan. Hello, my name is Stefan Nothelfer. I'm responsible for Partnerships at Lufthansa Innovation Hub. And it's a pleasure to be part of today's Germany Singapore Business Forum. Over the next minutes, I'd like to briefly introduce Lufthansa Innovation Hub, share a little bit about our current focus fields and activities, and also talk about how we could best get in touch and collaborate. Lufthansa Innovation Hub is Lufthansa Group's primary unit for the development of new business in a digital context. We're based in Berlin and in Singapore with a team of roughly 40 innovation experts. We can be seen as Lufthansa Group's strategic answer to the accelerating dynamics in the global travel and mobility tech space, which are strongly driven by digitization. Our overall mission is to create and capture value beyond our core business of flying passengers from A to B. That means that we look at the entire travel chain and the entire travel experience end to end in order to identify new digital business opportunities. Open innovation is part of our DNA. We're situated right at the interface between the travel and mobility tech ecosystem on the one hand and Lufthansa Group on the other hand. Everything we do happens from a market perspective and we always follow a market perspective. Our activities can basically be clustered or described in three groups. First, we have a team of research professionals who continuously analyze and screen market developments in order to identify the latest trends and business opportunities. Second, we then try to seize these business opportunities by engaging in partnerships, driving strategic investments, or incubating our own ventures. And third, we try to bring the market perspective back to our core organization in order to drive its digital transformation. Obviously, COVID-19 affects our activities heavily as it basically devastated our entire industry. Nevertheless, we're absolutely convinced that at some point travel will return back to a higher level and we basically prepare for that. The crisis can be seen as a strong catalyst for change. And we now focus on areas that we believe will bring the biggest value in a post-COVID recovery phase. For engaging in partnerships with the ecosystem, we currently have four focus areas. The first one is seamlessly foster human interactions in both physical and virtual worlds. The pandemic has proven that video conferencing is indeed capable of substituting many in-person meetings. We believe that this is here to stay. We believe that even in a post-COVID world, the virtual world will host many more human interactions and way more than ever before. How can we use these new means of virtual interaction as a complement to physical interaction, which is a key reason for current business travel? How can we bridge the physical and virtual worlds to deliver the most value to our customers? Second focus area is sustainability. In the past years, air traffic alone has generated more than 900 million tons of CO2. And travelers have been increasingly questioning uh, conventional means of travel. That was particularly strong before the pandemic, but we believe it will continue uh, afterwards as well. How can we make travel more sustainable for the entire travel and mobility sector? Third focus area is about new services to empower our customers and reinstate 
confidence. The current crisis has produced far-reaching irregularities. Think of travel bans, think of flight restrictions, think of fear of getting infected in airports or on airplanes. Consumer confidence is pretty fragile and we see that even experienced travelers are hesitant to fly currently as they feel anxiety, confusion, or a lack of information. The question is how can we cope with that? And we believe that digital services might be one answer. Which new digital services can we introduce to A, restore confidence to fly again, and to B, empower travelers and provide them with the best customer experience? The fourth focus area is about business models, from transactional to relational business models. Relational business models have been on the rise across many, many industries. Think of software as a service, for example, which has become the new standard for uh, marketing software products. How can we adapt this? How can we harvest the power of subscriptions and other relational business models for the travel industry and ultimately use this to build a better relationship to our customers? And last but not least, how can airlines actually make such a transition? Let me briefly wrap up on how we can best partner. We're basically looking to collaborate with innovative startups and tech companies to jointly introduce new products and services in our focus fields. Ultimately, all partnerships should result in newly generated business and improve our customer experience. Our approach is very much uh, based on co-creation. We want to combine the assets and advantages of Lufthansa Group on the one hand with those of partner companies on the other hand to build new products. Now, if you have specific ideas on co-creation in mind, we'd love to get in touch. The best way to do so is to send an email, reach out to us via email with an idea sketch or a proposal uh, on how we can collaborate. Ideally, you would include some first documents about your company, be it a pitch deck or a, a project description. Um, please keep in mind that there always needs to be a joint business model. We're not necessarily the right unit to approach when it comes to sourcing of new software tools or uh, consulting services. These are our two contacts. So in Singapore, our partnership manager, Joyce Huang, would be the best person to contact. And in Berlin, it would be myself. Thank you very much for your interest in Lufthansa Innovation Hub, and we look forward to discussing further and getting in touch. Thanks, Stefan. Good to see you again. Um, before we go into questions, I'd just like to draw our audience's attention to a quick poll. If you just scroll down to the bottom of your screens, uh, you'll see a poll there, and we look forward to your responses. Um, Stefan, let's go quickly into the first question. Um, is Lufthansa looking only for market-ready product solutions from startups, or are you also open to building solutions with consulting or digital in, uh, innovation firms as well? I think that's a, that's a good question. So what we're looking for really is a complementary USP that a potential partner can bring to the table. This means we are open to building new products and services with a partner in a co-creation approach. Nevertheless, what we are not so much looking for really is just a, let me call it a regular consulting service without a dedicated USP that the partner can bring to the table. Thanks very much. Uh, next question. Does Lufthansa Innovation Hub also invest in startups? And if so, what are your, uh, your key requirements? Yeah. Um, so yes, we do not invest directly ourselves, but we moderate strategic investments for Lufthansa Group. Um, so key requirement is everything that is related to strategic investments. So the startup has to have an impact on our core business and has to have a strategic implication in order to, to justify such an investment. Thanks for that, Stefan. Appreciate your responses. Uh, we will now proceed with our fifth and last speaker, who is Mr. Johannes Berg. He's Managing Director of Digital Hub Logistics Hamburg. Johannes will be sharing with us the innovation interests of DHL and Volkswagen Logistics. Johannes, please. 
Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome from Hamburg. My name is Johannes Berg. I'm the managing director of the Digital Hub Logistics here in Hamburg. And we are very happy and fortunate to take part of this session today. The Digital Hub Logistics uh, is a physical and more and more digital network which brings together startups, corporate partners, science and research, further education, as well as the political scene here in our beautiful city of Hamburg, with the goal to foster the exchange and foster the implementation, the validation of innovations along the logistical value chain. Of course, as Singapore as well, uh, our heart beats very close to our harbor and to our port. Nevertheless, we also focus on a whole lot of a variety uh, of other logistics solutions. I already mentioned that we bring together corporate partners and, and startups and our corporate partners amongst them, Lufthansa, Bayersdorf, Shell, uh, the group logistics of Volkswagen and DHL Freight share their challenges, share their ideas, their process, product and business model innovation uh, endeavors with us. And I would like to uh, take this opportunity to focus in particular on the current ideas or the current topics and challenges that Volkswagen, the group logistics of Volkswagen and DHL focus uh, on at the moment very heavily, not only here at the Digital Hub, but in their overall endeavors to, first of all, uh, implement more sustainable uh, processes, products and business models. And second, to digitize many processes, uh, products and business models. So these two core pillars, sustainability and digitalization, are the ones where these two companies are really actively scouting, developing, and are eager to embark on cooperation with startups. Let me focus on the area of sustainability first. Both companies are maneuvering very heavy vehicles and goods from trailers to ships to cars. And uh, sustainability for them means to look into CO2 reduction technologies, uh, hardware as well as software. They're looking into alternative fuel concepts such as anything that has to do with hydrogen or sustainable uh, other fuels. They are looking into alternative renewable sustainable materials, for example, containers or parcels and anything that can help to put their current business model, their current product on a sustainable path is really uh, an area which they are very open to, to discuss and, and work together with startups. The second area being digitalization. Well, both areas go, of course, a little bit hand in hand. But what do I mean with digitalization when Volkswagen and uh, DHL come in here? They're looking uh, for startups that can help them to improve the data quality of the data that both of these companies in their daily doings generate, uh, improving data quality leading to data-driven process or product decisions and business models. So everything that uh, can provide an added value on the data that they already generate, data quality being one important aspect. The second thing is hardware as well as, uh, of course, software uh, in anything. Uh, and you may think this is an old cup of tea, but still very interesting to both companies. Uh, sensor technologies so uh, censoring uh, implementations along their, their um, processes in order to then, of course, generate more data. So anything that has to do with sensoring technologies, sensor fusion, track and trace uh, solutions are, of course, also very, uh, very intrigued and, and very important to these two companies. I hope I've shared uh, some insights with you um, and uh, I look forward to your questions and uh, the entire Digital Hub Logistics Network is then, of course, also looking forward to put you in touch with uh, the startups here from Hamburg. Thank you. Thanks very much, Johannes. 
Uh, let's just jump right into questions. Uh, the first one is, what is your experience with cross-border innovation collaboration? And how can a Singapore-based startup work most effectively with a corporate member of Digital Hub Logistics Hamburg that is based in Germany? So uh, that's a very good question. Good morning uh, from Hamburg or good afternoon to Singapore. Um, for us, for our network, as well as for all corporate partners that are part of the Digital Hub, it doesn't really matter where a startup or a great idea is located, whether it's within Hamburg, whether it's within Germany or Europe, or whether we find a good idea in, uh, in Israel, Norway or Singapore. And uh, just talking about it right now, we will have a, an event tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, your time, where we will welcome three Singapore-based startups to actually uh, pitch live uh, in front of DHL Freight, uh, the Hamburg Port Authority and uh, Volkswagen Group Logistics. Uh, and we, as the digital hub, we are, so to say, the matchmaker or the doorkeeper uh, to see, okay, which startups could uh, lead to a match with which corporate or another institution here in Hamburg. And uh, I think for the first few steps, uh, even now, given the last nine months or, or this year, even where we all learned how, how possible it is also to, to collaborate over digital means, um, you don't really necessarily have to meet in person. Nonetheless, we had some uh, very great examples where some startups then uh, after a few phone calls and video chats uh, came over to Hamburg. And every startups uh, from Singapore, for example, would have a safe haven here at the Digital Hub to spend a week or two. And uh, we'll then see to take it from there, um, how our cooperation could go on. Thanks, Johannes. And we're looking forward to your event tomorrow as well. Uh, a quick second question. Uh, does Digital Hub Logistics Hamburg help the corporates to make any pre-assessment or, or filtering? Um, before connecting interested startups with your corporates? Yes, so uh, our goal is not to always have the very bloomy uh, startup pitching uh, world uh, around the corporates, but to also push for really quantifiable results for quantifiable projects that a corporate and a startup uh, enter. And therefore we have, as I already said, we are a little bit the goal or the gatekeeper at the Digital Hub. We've developed some templates, some, some mechanisms to screen and evaluate uh, the matching beforehand so that uh, the startups that our corporate partners meet are really worth the time and the while uh, for, for entering into an exchange. Thanks very much, Johannes. And indeed, thank you to all of our corporates for joining us. Uh, we have come to the end of our innovation crowdsourcing segment. So thank you to, to all of you for your time. Um, startups who wish to engage with our speakers further you write in to us at gsbfconnect at enterprisesg.gov.sg and we will do our best to follow up to arrange meetings subject to mutual interest.